just written down some equations here and we are going to see the solution for these equations. Now the first equation you see that 5x is going to be equal to 0 or x is going to be equal to 0. The second equation 7x becomes a minus 11 here correct 8 you take it to the other side or x becomes a minus 11 by 7 which is a rational number. Come back to this. If you factorize this, you get uh, x minus 3 into uh, x minus 4 or the solution, you see that it's either x is equal to 3 or 4. For this equation, x square becomes 11 here. So, the solution is either root 11 or a minus root 11. But just come back to this. When you solve this, what do you get? You get x square to be equal to minus 5, uh, 3 minus 8 or you get it to be negative. Now the solution for these equations here, they are either rational numbers or integers and so on or um, you know uh, it is either a plus or minus root 11 irrational numbers and so on or the set of all the solutions I can just put it under the set of real numbers. But when the square of a number is going to be negative the number is definitely not going to be, the solution is not going to be real. So what we do is, the set of real numbers now, you expand it or make it into a bigger set. Now I am sure all of you know that the set of rational numbers and the irrational numbers, if you put them together, this becomes the set of real numbers. Now the solution for this equation, when the square is going to be negative, doesn't fit into either rational or irrational or it doesn't fit into the set of real numbers. So what happens is you have to now expand the set of real numbers into a bigger set to accommodate this solution. So what we do is please listen carefully this minus 5 we will split it as a 5 into minus 1 and this root of minus 1 we call it as the imaginary number i. So, what happens here is you get when root minus 1 is equal to i, this automatically implies this i square will be equal to minus 1. So, the solution for this x square is equal to minus 5 here, we can write it as x is equal to a plus or minus root 5 i. So, when you square both sides, this becomes a 5, okay, i square becomes a 1, minus 1, so you get this to be equal to minus 1. Now, i square, this i is going to be a basic imag imaginary number which is root of minus 1 and using this concept of the imaginary number, we extend the set of real numbers to a new si system of numbers or new set of numbers what are called as complex numbers. Usually a complex number has got two parts. One is the real part of the complex number and the other one is what is called as the complex or the imaginary part of the complex number. Any complex number has got two parts. This is what is A, B, of course, both are real numbers. This is the real part of the complex number. This is the imaginary part of the complex number. As I told you earlier, this i is equal to root of minus 1. And I am sure you can understand that this i square, when you square both sides automatically, i square is equal to minus 1. So what we have done here is to accommodate the solution of an equation where the square is negative something like x square is equal to minus 5, we expand the set of real numbers to a bigger set. So if you have real numbers like this, this complex number is going to be a bigger set, which is for which, so you, I'm sure you can see here that the set of real numbers is going to be the subset of the set of complex numbers. Okay. And in general, a complex number is denoted by the letter z it is general form is going to be uh, a plus ib or a bi.